accommodative isotropias account for 50% of all childhood isotropias. In this presentation, we will learn in detail about the types and management of accommodative isotropias. Accommodative isotropias can be classified into three types, refractive, non-refractive and partially accommodative or decompensated isotropia. Accommodative isotropia usually is seen after 6 months of age unlike infantile isotropia which develops at an earlier age. They are initially intermittent at onset but becomes constant over time. They are frequently associated with amblyopia and often could be hereditary as well. Now coming to the first uh, type of refractive accommodative isotropia, they have a high uncorrected hyperopia usually more than plus 3. This high hyperopia leads to accommodative convergence. If the patient's fusional divergence amplitudes are small, it leads to isotropia. Usually, it starts around 2 to 3 years of age and the kid might complain of asthenopic symptoms like headache or diplopia. The angle of deviation is usually not large and a full cycloplegic refraction needs to be done and full cycloplegic prescription needs to be given uh, to the kid. Now the cycloplegic refractive error ranges between plus 1.5 to plus 7. Now even if parents do not complain of any other, uh, Im any other visual problem, it is important to convince them uh, to use the glasses as uh, all the time as delay would result in loss of fusional ability, loss of binocular single vision and amblyopia. Another important thing to be told to the parents is glasses have to be worn full time since wearing them part time would not relax child's accommodation fully. And uh, once the child starts wearing the glasses, the squint would not be seen for the time when the child is wearing them. But upon removing the glasses, the squint will come back. Sometimes the parents tell that since the kid started wearing glasses, they see even more squint for the time when the kid is not wearing glasses. This is true and happens because of increased accommodative effort than before leading to increased angle of isotropia without glasses. The child needs to be evaluated at 6 to 8 weeks. If the squint with glasses is within 8 to 10 prism diopter for distance as well as near uh, with no asthenopic symptoms and good stereopsis, the child can be periodically followed up and cyclorefraction repeated uh, periodically. If on follow-up, squint for distance is still high with glasses, then the patient has a partially accommodative isotropia. These kids usually require a surgery. If the distance deviation is acceptable but near deviation is still high, then these kids are considered to have a high AC by A ratio which we will discuss in later slides. Usually as these kids with the refractive accommodative isotropia are about 9 to 10 years old, uh, we can uh, try reducing the plus power by 0.5 diopter per year. Some uh, doctors suggest waiting till around 12 years till they have uh, crossed the amblyopiogenic age and then start weaning. Now coming to the second variety which is called as non-refractive accommodative isotropia. So, a subgroup of patients with accommodative isotropia have isotropia which is significantly greater at near than distance. They are considered to have a high AC by A ratio isotropia. These kids need more accommodative effort to look at near thereby more convergence and higher isotropia for near. The refractive error in this condition could be hyperopic, emetropic or myopic hence it is called as non-refractive that is not dependent on refractive status. The AC by A ratio can be calculated using two methods, a heterophoria method and a gradient method. Now usually the preferred practice to treat a high AC by A ratio or the non-refractive accommodative isotropia is to give a bifocal glasses. The near at could be around 2.5 to plus 3. The child is reviewed at 1 month and squint measured for distance and near. In very young kids less than 1 year old, spectacle compliance may not be ideal and some, uh, some practitioners uh, prescribe ecothiophate iodide 0.125%.
the uh, role of surgery in uh, non refractive accommodative isotropia is controversial the aim of surgery is to make it free of bifocal glasses in order to achieve that a complete correction for near squint is needed however a few kids while achieving so can develop an exo for distance another popular technique is utilization of fedain suture which is by far the largely used technique along with medial rectus resection a posterior fixation suture is put which controls the higher near iso deviation now coming to the third uh, variety of accommodative isotropia which is called as partially accommodative or decompensated isotropia so some kids do not show a complete reduction in isotropia with glasses but have a residual isotropia despite full cycloplegic hyperopic correction this is called as partially accommodative isotropia initially to start with it is a fully accommodative isotropia which subsequently over time becomes decompensated hence it is also known as a de decompensated accommodative isotropia the initial treatment of partially accommodative isotropia is full uh, hyperopic correction then a follow up in around another 6 weeks time and if the residual isotropia for distance and near is more than 10 prism diopters with poor stereopsis then the kid will need a surgery bilateral medial rectus resection is the surgery of choice the most accepted surgery is to operate on the amount of residual squint that is operating on the non accommodative component the child will still uh, need to wear glasses if kids with high ac by a ratio with partially accommodative isotropia the most acceptable technique is averaging the near deviation without correction with the distance deviation without correction and correction of the average of these two readings another method to calculate the uh, amount of uh, correction is uh, to do a prism adaptation in which a base out prism for the residual isotropia is given after full cycloplegic correction uh, the child uh, is called for follow up after 2 weeks and if the isotropia has increased a larger prism is given the process continues every 2 weekly uh, at every 2 weekly intervals until the deviation is stabilized and the surgeon then operates on this full prism adapted angle the success after uh, this method is said to be around 85% thank you